Aloha gang, it's Robert Stelic with Blue Planet Surf Shop. I just want to make a little introduction to the video we made about foiling safety. It's a great video for anybody that's getting into foiling. So this video was Lilio Kinimaka's idea. He got some of his friends together. Kalani Vieira from Kauai came and Sam Pai from the west side plus some other really good watermen uh, to share their knowledge, their manao with us. So it's, it's a long video. I spent almost a whole sleepless night editing it. I'm still working on it. So I hope somebody gets something out of it and hope you enjoy it. Take your time to watch the whole thing. It has a lot of really good information in it. The beginning, the sound is a little bit rough. We had some noise from the pool at the Elks Club on the outside, but it gets better as you go. So enjoy, be safe, aloha. I think this is a great opportunity uh, for us to get together and and talk about foiling safety because as you know foiling is kind of getting very popular now and a lot of people are getting into it and uh, my, my biggest concern is I'm, I love foiling and um, I think we should kind of set some guidelines so everybody can kind of follow the rules so things don't get out of hand that the government will get in and start regulating and start enforcing rules. So I think this would be a great opportunity to uh, share some of our experiences and our um, research and development as we, we came across in the last year. And I think um, some people will kind of find this information valuable uh, that you know they can start off in a safe and uh, courteous manner. Uh, I think a lot of the things that we kind of should be talking about is, is etiquette, you know, surfing etiquette has its, and I think foiling should have some type of uh, uh, etiquette in a surf zone. Uh, safety gear, I think is very important. We should touch on some of the safety gear concerns. Uh, being role models in a community and showing that foiling is safe and fun, but in, in uh, doing it in a respectful and courteous manner. Being positive and respectful to others in the ocean. You know, I know we have uh, this new foiling is a big new thing kind of blowing up and I think we should be role models and showing that uh, being respectful and courteous to others in the surf zone is a very important. Uh, and, and, and lastly, I think environmental concerns is another big issue. Uh, we need to take care of our ocean and take care of our surf zone and, you know, be protectors of the ocean. So I think that'll be some really good topics that we can touch on. One of my biggest concerns, um, I, I love foiling, I sell foils, I sell my foils with uh, instruction and etiquette. My biggest concern are the people that are able to purchase their foils online and so I think it's important that we kind of create a platform and an instructional for people that buy their gear online, put their gear together and get in the water um, without any coaching. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, to that's, me, that's like that's super dangerous. dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. So, like Kalani was talking about, getting uh, in touch with people that foil in your area, you know, looking for maybe a Facebook page or an Instagram page. So, I, I think it's super important that us guys as foilers, not only for information, but to hold each other accountable. Because I, I, I think the thing that's going to cause us trouble in the future is going into lineups that are crowded and and once somebody gets you know injured or run over that that's when we're gonna have a problem everybody my thing I get questions a lot I get people asking and sharing our you know we we as we as Hawaiians we share our knowledge and what we learn and what we gain and um, we get all these questions all the time you know and Giving out information, just doing this is basically just to give out information and to, to show them that it's it's fun to do, but it's not that easy. We make them look easy. You know, we get so much years of knowledge in the ocean and understanding, but when it comes to something like this in a new sport, um, we all should be the ambassadors to at least share with them, um, let them know that there's all different type of aspects that you're going to end up running into and with with we us guys gaining our knowledge we can share this with them and that's what this in this video, this video is mainly about is to share our knowledge to share our manao 
with um, with the people throughout the world. We don't want anybody else to get hurt or um, running into situations where um, it's going to become become a conflict inside the lineup with the foilers. Um, like years ago when they had it with the standoffs. Now everybody seems to be accepting it. Um, now when foiling come along this new sport, um, we all should be um, here just to make sure that we, once we're in the lineup, we're safe and we can share all our knowledge with everybody. And it's actually fun and you can enjoy it, uh, but there's also safety aspects behind this. Okay, so I, I think that, say for instance, you're a fellow, you, you've been intrigued by foiling, you purchase your equipment online, you get, you get your stuff in the mail, you, you've got a board, you've got a foil. I think the, the important things that now should come into play would be assessing your gear. Um, if you're doing prone foiling, that's one thing. In making sure that your, your foil is in the correct place. Um, making sure you got the right wings for the right type of energy that you're surfing on. Um, everybody out there, man, I, I don't care how good you are or how, who you are, put a leash on, you know, <laughs> because you, a lot of times you can fall off and, and the foil just keeps going and or, you know, you, we really don't like seeing foils go, get, get cartwheeled. I mean, even if you're towing in, if there's other people out there, you should have a leash on. Yeah. So anyway, I, I was touching on the guy that buys his gear online and what's important, what, what we would like to see. So uh, to add to that, it's like knowing the spot, no, no, knowing where you're going to surf, where you're going to paddle out at, um, you know, and that's why it's so important, I feel, to get plugged in with other foilers ar ar around the area. Um, I've seen it happen before in, in stand-up paddling where people don't really know how to surf, but they can get on a board and stand up paddle. Next thing you know, they're creeping into the lineup. But you have to understand, even if you're a kite surfer or a wind surfer and you're not a surfer, there's a different dynamic that happens in the lineup. And it's something that's important to get familiar with. And I think being part of a foiling club or a Facebook page or other foilers, you know, that experience from other people can really help you out. You need to know the area, um, especially where you're at. Um, if you're not too sure, um, or you plan on going to somewhere new, new, like a new spot. Today I went to a new spot. I've never been there before, but I went with somebody. And they kind of took me out, and I was asking them a lot of questions. Knowing depth perception, and uh, just by reading, looking at the environment around you, looking at rocks, seeing different, uh, different water lines, uh, changing color, colorations, that kind of gives you an idea. It's, learning the, it's, it's gaining that knowledge of the area that you're at. The guy took me out and to showed me exactly where the rocks are, what to look for, and today I went out and we kind of figured it out. What is the tide doing at that point in the time? Where's the current running? What's the wind doing at that time? Where, what direction are the waves? All of this kind of stuff all comes into play. So that kind of helps with um, being safe. You don't want to go to somebody else's house without introducing yourself or being uh, respectful to that place too as well. Yeah. Um, when once they start seeing foils coming around, they start getting questions and stuff like that. But if you can be respectful, that's the key thing: being respectful to where you're gonna go and um, to everybody else that's around. Uh, yeah, I agree. Um, you know, finding if you guys are learning, obviously you want to try to get it hooked up with an experienced foiler, and you know, definitely you want to find locations that is not too crowded. Obviously, you don't want to go out uh, right through the middle of Waikiki when there's a few hundred of people and trying to learn how to foil. You definitely want to find those little secluded locations that um, if you do kind of go out of control, you won't be injuring or jeopardizing other surfers or people in the water. Kind of staying clear of uh, other surfers. Uh, definitely, you want to try to get in the back of a jet ski or a boat. I would highly recommend if you, if you have the opportunity or even taking a quick lesson for one of the local dealers around the island. Uh, definitely a couple of easy tips could make a, a learning curve a little easier. Uh, definitely if you just get a foil off, offline and you just go into any surf break, obviously the learning curve is going to be uh, really risky. And if you do, you want to make sure you get a helmet and an impact vest in, in some fashion because uh, injuries do happen. Yeah, so I think it's important if you can, if you have the, if you have the chance to get pulled behind a boat or a jet ski, 
preferably by someone who's got some experience in foiling because speed um, speed to wing volume ratio is super important. Um, although it's a different mechanic to it, I believe, it's a different dynamic when you're being pulled and, and all of the tension is on the rope, but you kind of get a feel to what it's, to what it feels like to be up on the wing. I think that's a great thing. But when you actually get into a wave, like you're, you're paddling into a wave, whether you're prone foiling or stand up paddle foiling, there are some, there are some tricks that are available out there from guys that have experience that will really reduce your chance of being injured by a, a great percent as opposed to just going out there and trying to do it. I know, you know, if, if you're fascinated by the by foiling and you see these local brados out here just making it look easy, it's really not that easy. I mean, there's a learning curve to it and it's super important. Like if you're on Oahu, you can call Blue Planet, you can call me, we provide lessons and it will save you, it, it could save you, you know, some injury, it will save you a lot of heartache, it will get you on to flying a lot, a lot quicker. So as far as um, actually paddling in and getting up, so that whole learning part, if you're on a prone board, it's super important to remember to keep your body weight shifted forward keep your speed down low. You don't want to be taking off on anything that's too steep because eventually what happens is you're trying to get to your feet, you've got a lot of energy being forced underneath the wing and you're just going to pop up. And, and that's really not what you want. You want to really start slow, keep your, keep your body weight way to the front of the board when you're prone foiling, keep your body weight forward, keep your hands out you know, a little bit more in front than you're not used to. to and get your feet into position and then you can kind of slowly activate the foil same thing with stand-up paddling when i do lessons with stand-up paddling what i like to share is to um, i usually provide foot straps or a place where they know where to put their feet so i give them three things to focus on when they're taking off is foot placement is number one and then what helps to create better balance on top of the board is rotating your shoulders square with the rail, even if your paddle has to come straight across in front of you. And then what that helps you to do is to adjust your body weight over your front knee to keep the wing down. And then when you're ready to activate, you basically just lean back. Because if, you're, if your shoulders aren't square with the rails, it becomes a little bit more tippy. So as you square up your shoulders with the rails, you're a little bit more squared up and balanced and you can control the wing altitude a little better that way. So that's super important. Your foot placement, getting squared up and not having too much speed. You just take off nice and slow and easy, just real slow white water rollers. If, if, if you got too much wave, you're asking for trouble. So it's better to just take off real slow and then slowly learn to activate the foil. We actually do lessons with a mass that's shorter. It's designed, Alex Aguera designed it specifically for lessons for safety. And it, it, it's really nice and it's really helpful because all you want to do is learn to come up. You know, we, I try to get my students to come up just two inches or four inches at a time and learn how to fly straight on a slow speed. Then eventually, once you start being comfortable uh, surfing on the wing and not a surfboard anymore, then you can learn to start trimming and turning. Main thing is to um, control, learn, learn how to control the foil. Don't let the board or the foil, the foil control you. Squaring, like Leleo said, squaring off your body is a key factor. A lot of guys think that we're, um, <clears throat> we'll go off and we're in our surfing stance, but we're actually squared off on our body. It looks like we're surfing, but we're not. Um, it's understanding squaring off, which basically balances out your body, which basically straightens out the board. If you are in your surfing stance, what usually happens is you're weighted more on one side of the board. So if you're regular footed, yeah, your right side of your board uh, will get more, which is going to be more weight because your body is not squared off. It's basically in its surfing stance. Yeah, which basically has more weight on one side. Um, I'm goofy-footed, so I, I have more weight. 
I, I, I have more weight on my right side. And if you're regular footed, then you're, you have more weight on your left side of your board. So what happens is once this foil feels the energy, you're already giving it a command. Basically telling it, well, once you, once you start to lean on the foil, it's going to, it's going to start to run. So because I'm goofy footed and I have, I'm in my surfing stance, I got to remember to square everything off. All of this stuff that I learned now, this is from experience now. I did go behind a boat. I was instructed behind a boat. Um, I was in Maui and I um, ran into Alex Aguero and I wanted to learn. And <clears throat> having somebody with the experience on a boat, on a jet ski, that can actually see what you're doing and correct you, which will catapult you a lot more easier into learning this aspect than actually just trying to go out and, and, and foil. Because you really don't, under don't understand what's going on. So that's a good point you brought up about controlling the wing. And that's something that Alex had taught me before, yeah. is that the wing doesn't have a mind of its own. It, it needs to be directed. So it's super important that when you're learning how, it's um, find somebody who does it so they can tell you what, how much wing you need and where's a good place to surf, obviously. And so once you get your gear together and you start attempting to fly, it's important to know that once you get up and going, the wider your wing, the more direction you need to give it. The smaller the wing, the easier it's going to be to maneuver. I like to keep in my head the concept because it, it doesn't function like a surfboard anymore. If you're a surfer and you're doing this, you're, you're used to, to turning on rails and it's almost like your nose is up in the air and your tail's in the water and you're doing these turns. Now we're kind of turning like an airplane turns where you're doing more of a banking turn as opposed to a rail carving turn. So I like grabbing the concept, especially once you start getting into the area where you're going a lot faster. I, I keep in my mind that, okay, now what I'm doing, I'm setting up for a turn. I kind of, in my mind, I set that one edge of the wing, let the wing fill up with the water pressure underneath it, and then now I can start doing my banking turn. So there's a, a it's important to dominate the wing because if, if you're afraid of it, and you just kind of let it do what you think it wants to do, it's gonna do something you're not ready for. So it's important to really drive, you know, we, we like to call it toe to heel movement and, and just really stick that wing in and, and, and give it direction. It's, it's super important that you, you know, respect the foil, but you also have to dominate it. You have to give it direction. I think I just came back from snowboarding Okay, and uh, I'm a surfer. Snowboarding requires that when you're going down a hill, you attack it leaning forward a lot. <clears throat> um, when you're foiling and you're taking off on a steep wave, there's a tendency for uh, surfers to get back on their tail, keep the nose up, when in fact you actually want to be leaning forward and you want to flex, you want to flex knee, okay? And that flex in your knee is gonna give you that spring. When this, <clears throat> when your wing starts rising, if your legs are stiff and they're straight and you're leaning back on your tail, extending your toes, it's just gonna throw you. It's gonna buck you really quick. Ooh, let so, me touch on something real quick. Yeah, okay. You're on that topic. Okay. So yeah. what happens here <clears throat> is our natural reaction is to correct it. And from my experience, it, you've got to remember that once you start getting lift too quick, just bail it out from under you. Because if you stay on top of it and you're trying to correct it, that's when the accident of tipping over and the foil coming up and poking you, that, that's when that occurs, yeah. is when we try to correct it and it's too late. So once you feel like you've taken on a wave that's got too much energy and it comes up abruptly, just kick it out from under you. Sorry about that. If no, you, that's good. As soon as you can only give yourself a little bit of time right. by leaning forward and attacking right. it. And you think you might be purling, but it doesn't work that way, actually. Yeah. You aren't going to purl. There's so much lift behind, under the blade. You're going to come up. And uh, so you need that flex in the front. So maybe a snowboarder is going to learn a little quicker from what I've seen. 
Um, just keep that in mind too. Yeah. It's, it's, help you. Whenever it's it's trying to learn control. Yeah. If something don't feel right, something don't look right, something don't sound right, it probably ain't right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, if you start to study more what we're trying to say, everything that you know about surfing, yeah, gets thrown out the window. Yeah. Everything you you, you your regular surfing stance wrong, square, everything is all squaring off. When you go down on a steep wave, like Edmund was saying, you you only have the tendency to lean back. That's regular surfing stance, not in foiling. Foiling, you gotta put, you gotta control that foil. So when I when, when people ask, and I, I, I share with them, if you can control the foil, yeah, and not have the foil control you, you're already being able to feel and understand what the foil is doing. Staying low and in control would be a lot better than staying high and trying to fly. Because everybody thinks, oh yeah, I'm flying, I'm doing it. But the thing is, once you start flying, once you start picking up speed, what you gonna do from there? Are you in control? No. You gotta be in control first before you can stay high and fly. Stay low and in control is the key thing. Because once you start controlling the foil and being low and you know what to do, then you already know when to stay high and fly, then to come down and stay low and in control. So that's one of the key things that I yeah. try to share with, um, share my mana'o with, with, with my friends. Um, that was all being taught behind the boat. Um, when I was behind, when I was in Maui and I was behind the boat and I was all with Alex them and Everything was all stay low, stay low, stay low, stay low. Why should I stay low? I want to stay high and fly. No, you stay low so you can be in control. Because once you can control the foil, you feel the foil, you can stay high and fly and know exactly what to do when it comes time for coming back down. Coming back down. Coming back yeah, so that's, a, that's the next thing that we probably want to talk about is, you know, where to surf, where's the best breaks. Mm -hmm. So obviously foiling opens up a whole new venue of where you can surf. You don't have to be in a spot that's got other people in it, especially when you're just learning. Um, be careful paddling out through gnarly shore break uh, when it's windy, uh, when it's you know bigger and closing out. Obviously, it's easier to paddle out when you're laying down on a shorter prone board. You can you know you can dolphin dive underneath waves. Uh, when you're on a stand up paddle board, it's a little bit more difficult if the way if, if there's not a, a open channel and you're having to paddle out if there's waves that are closing out i like using my front foot strap like if i am paddling out and there's a wave that's too big for me to punch through standing up i can just jump off my board hold my paddle in one hand grab the board by the strap and just kind of shove it through because um, i know that a lot of damage come happens to the foils if your board gets rolled in the surf because it's just hitting the mass in a way that it's not really designed to. So you really want to avoid your gear getting rolled in big surf. Um, so paddling out through surf, somebody had wrote down in the notes about paddling out through windy conditions. Was that anybody here? It might have been Todd. Anyway. I mean, I think what, yeah, what we should definitely cover is like going you know, going from land into the water, what to do if it's short break, if it's shallow, right? I mean, going in and out. Okay, of why the don't water, we touch on that, Kalani? Yeah, okay, yeah. Up. So, uh, I I think you should find a uh, a location with definitely an easy entry and exit that is fairly deep, uh, with no major shore breaks. Definitely, if you find a place that have a good open channel, uh, some some place that it kind of breaks and it slowly dies out into a deeper water, I think that would probably be the best locations that you could start off with. Um, obviously, once your skill level gets better, then you can start getting into maybe juicier waves or little more critical areas that, but you gotta make sure getting in and getting out of some place with a strong shore break can be really risky. Uh, damaging your, your equipment for one and then also getting injured. Um, touching on, if you're on a stand up and you're going out and here comes the white water and you try to want to go over it, you guys got to be aware now that the foil under the board, the white water is going to hit the foil and the board. Now you have a double contact with the white water that is going to come up even faster. A friend of mine did the same way like he did on a regular stand up and didn't put weight on the front of the board going over the white water, the board came up, whacked him in his ribs, broke his ribs. 
So something yeah, to I think about. Broke my radio and then buckled the board. Actually. It came up so fast because it hit the foil and the board at the same time. So there's something you want to be aware. Yeah. Weight on the front when you're trying to go about wide. Also bottom. taking into consideration if there's people paddling out behind you, man, that's that's like so dangerous. I mean, even just even you're if you're on a stand-up paddle board, that can be dangerous. But we're kind of it's a little bit easier to you know get through the surf. But if your gear gets taken away from you, you got also remember too that and and how important it is to have a sturdy leash you know the kind makes a you know some fatter gauge leashes and you have to remember that when your gear gets caught in the surf there's so much more tension pulling on it so make sure that you got the right equipment and then one, one more last point i think uh, no matter what your level is beginner advanced intermediate you should always have some kind of risk management process because you always should think about safety. Even for experienced guys like us, we, st we always think about safety first, where I'm going to paddle out, how I'm going to come in, how far I'm going to stay away, what if something, a wave comes, how far I'm away from the, the next surfer or swimmer or, or people in the water. So always have a risk management, always think about safety over everything, you know, safety for yourself, especially, you know, and just have really good common sense in the safety risk management. I think you can make your thought process a little easier, uh, especially if it's just like uh, driving a car. You know, you're going across an intersection. Do you just drive across? No, you're going to stop, look both ways, make sure it's safe, and then you're going to cross. Pretty much the same concept of uh, the foiling. You know, just have a good risk management thought process. Well, starting off with this, I saw Sam doing his thing, and it caught my interest, and I told myself, man, I want to be able to do that. So I called him up and asked him, what do I need to do to get out there to start something like this? So he said, you got to make one commitment. You got to get your gear. So, okay, that was done. First day on the beach, I asked him, Sam, I don't want to get hurt. I don't want to hurt others. How can we start? I don't care if we don't take the board in the water today. Just teach me what I got to do to get out in the water, be safe, get over whitewash. What do I do? Where do we start? But I want to be safe for everybody. So that's where he took me, took about half an hour, we're yeah, on the beach, boyfriend. hour, yeah. talking story. And then I'm trying to remember everything he's telling me. And it really helped. Yeah, and that's exactly why we're doing this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's a good point. So that way the average person can uh, do this uh, safely, but having somebody around to share with you you know don't do this do that it really helps being alongside somebody that can actually show you you know if you see the wave doing this and you're gonna do this well this is gonna happen and when this happens make sure you do that because if not then this is gonna happen there's so many different um, controls and actions that can happen with the safety point if you don't realize what's gonna happen of course you're gonna get hurt um, so that's why uh, being with somebody asking the questions it's that's the, the, the key point and why why we're all here um, I like the idea of um, dry land exercises so you can anticipate early on what's going on uh, to just be walking in the water for your first time carrying the foils danger <laughs> That's Some dangerous. people can't even you, carry the foil yeah. in the water. And right where we're at over here, there's stairs too. So it's always an exercise in the dynamics. It's, it's kind of crazy. It's a whole new thing. On my head, do I throw it? You know? And, um, you know, the dry land exercises kind of tune you in and it gives you time to reconsider your options. So yeah. just do it on, on dry land. No current, you know, and um, so to actually have somebody who's really experienced picking up the wing tip, some of the boards, the prone boards, they don't have handles in them, so yeah. it's really hard yeah. sometimes. So learn, learn on dry land first, easy. Yeah. When, when somebody yeah, yeah. gets hurt out here, then it goes to legislation, yeah. Yeah. and you know the history. They read. It goes, it goes to a complaint. Then it goes to yeah. Then, yeah. then it goes to a, then it goes to a process. Yeah. Then it, then the writing's on the wall. This is what we're anticipating too. You know, water entry is one thing, and all that's personal. 
But the, the user, the worst the thing user that conflict happens, situation yeah. is something so, that we're going to have to address. All it takes that one guy to run a surfer over who's an attorney. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's, they're going to try and stop it. So this is, this is the thing that, that hurts us. And we've seen it happen before with stand-up paddling. The stand-up paddler now realizes that he can paddle fast and he can take off way outside and he can get back out there and get another one and just blow everybody's mind. But not realizing that he's actually being a, a dick, you know, being a coot <laughs> and being a wave hog. And now you're starting to see this happen with mm -hmm. foiling because, it, yeah, man, it looks cool, you know. And you see people light up when you go flying by and it kind of starts stroking the ego. And now you got the same thing happening where the guys are showing off and they're roping through the crowd. And those are the guys that are going to get us in trouble. Those are the guys that, you know, most likely will cause the injury because they're in the crowd. So... That being said, it's everybody's responsibility, especially the experienced guys, to regulate that. Because I'll tell you what, nobody else is. You can have some local brada in the lineup that will tell somebody and say, hey, you know what, bro? Fuck, take your foil and get out of here. You know, simple as that. But and there's a lot of breaks on Oahu that aren't like that. You know, that people don't do that. You know, a lot of people are respectful and, you know, they're just not going to call you out and tell you to split. So it's important for us guys. I mean, and we've seen it happen before with stand up paddling, you know, it's, it's up to us. It, we, we have to regulate when we see guys, you know, overdoing it. And, and Sam and I already have had to do it. We've had to tell guys, you know what, bro, kind of getting out of control. We don't want you surfing this break anymore or take a break from this break for now. And, and it works, but it, it's super important that we regulate each other this way. You and know? and I, I agree. Uh, I, I think uh, foiling clubs or experienced uh, people should get together and start self-regulating or setting some basic guidelines that we can all follow. Um, obviously, it will take one person to mess up the whole program, but there's so many spots that can open up to foiling now that you don't have to go to the Waikiki's or the 100 people or, you know, there's a lot of places that foiling can be adventured. Um, but I think we need to self-regulate. We need to be courteous and respectful to others. We try not to use the risk management process like I talked about and try to keep your safety, safety of others and be role models for the future. And this show that foiling is a new sport, but it is safe and it is fun. But we, we need to make sure we send a message to everybody who's getting into the sport now. Yeah. Uh, well, we, we, we were touching, we basically, oh. <laughs> basically, what are we doing? We're talking story, we and then it started to then it goes into equipment, and then we're coming back to the Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So right. Basically, that's what's okay. happening here. I just thought we were, like, going through a topic. Yeah, we don't have yeah. an agenda here. So. Okay, okay. Strip is out of the wall. All there is is a lot of editing for Robert so anyway, we were originally on the topic of entry level people buying their gear, picking it up, wondering what to do with it. So we touched on a bunch of stuff, foot straps, leashes. This is another concern. You know, what, what if you get to a break where it's just shallow and you got to paddle out upside down, you know? Well, that's what he was asking at what spots would be. Yeah. Prime, prime spots. So what, what if you do have to paddle out upside down? You know, how, how do you do it? How do you, how do you paddle up? When I paddle up upside down, if there's, if there's a lot of surge, I'm very careful um, that uh, if even if I have to swim in and just kind of push it along and do that. But usually what I try to do is um, I put the foil actually up against my shoulder because um, I still wear an impact vest to this day only because... Um, it's not that it's not because I'm worried about the foil. It's I'm worried about the falls at 25 miles an hour and knocking the wind out of me, which happens a lot. So, or coming over the handlebars and hitting the the um, the front, which happens, as you know, when we start going fast and getting it going. So anyway, I put the foil up against my shoulder, the shaft up against my shoulder, and then I paddle it that way, and it gives me stability. 
And that way, if I do hit a wave or have to go and thing, it's not sliding into me. It's already kind of locked in and I can lock in and, um, and just tinkle over. So you get deep you, enough. You know, Todd, I have to do that a lot. And what I just deduce is what I'm going to start doing is when I straddle the board, it's upside down. Mm -hmm. I got the blade right by my head, put it to the side. But you know how you're trying to go two hands and that little bit of white water starts shifting the board mm -hmm. around and putting a little, little wax right by my, where my thighs oh, yeah. are on That's the bottom of the board. Mm -hmm. Just to control it. Especially if you've got to do it a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. And the board's so, I got a new board. So slippery. Yeah, everything yeah. that's going under me like this. I'm going, hey, yeah. little wax. And don't forget go another, another solution for that is if you've got to turn your board upside down and paddle it, it's probably not going to be for that far of a distance. Yeah. One put hand. your leash on, <laughs> put the board in the back, and swim out there. For me, what I do some of, sometimes by the spot that I'm at, if, it's, if the white water's coming towards me and I got this thing upside down, my board always has a tail handle. Every board that I put on, I put a tail handle on it. And if I gotta be able to, you know, if this white water is coming towards me, I'll get off the board and I'll grab the tail handle, but I'll turn it on and make sure the board's here. So I know where it's at. And if it's shallow enough, <clears throat> yeah, I'll swim and still hold on to the board and hold on to the tail handle while that foil is up in the air. So that way I know the more deeper I can get, the more I can see, the more white water, and I know when it's clear. This is a risk management factor yeah, yeah. in understanding you know, if you got to gear your board specifically for safety, then do it. Um, all my boards have tail handles, and I like them only because of that one particular situation. If it gets away from me, I can still I can put it out here. Now I know where it's at. And then once, I, once I'm clear, I can pull the thing back to me. I can climb up on the board, and I'll turn around and I'll make sure that that foil mass is right here by my head and it's close to my shoulder. And I'm always facing the ocean. The bad part about some people, they... When they come, another thing coming in, if you turn around and you're having the, the wave facing you from behind, your feet is facing the back part of the wave, you don't know what's coming towards you. If the wave comes, picks up the board, pushes you down, your board is upside down, it's on a reverse rocker now, it's going to come down, you're going to come down, and you can turn around and nail yourself right in the head. It's understanding the, the environment that you're at and what you're doing, and keep in mind the, the, uh, the factors that's there. Um, the danger factors, the wind, the waves, the currents, and every, all of this part is all risk, part of risk management. Risk management is a key thing on, for me, and I'm pretty sure we all think about that prior to even going out. Uh, depth perception, understanding depth perception on paddling out. If you're not too sure how deep it is, what I usually do is I'll take my paddle from the blade, three feet up, I'll put a piece of tape on that thing. And if I'm paddling on, it looks kind of shallow. I'm standing up and I'm paddling. If it looks kind of shallow and I'm not too sure, if you if you don't if you're questioning yourself, I'll take that paddle and I'll do a depth check. And that tape is there for a specific specific reason. Um, sunlight and reflection make you makes depth perception changes. You know, it may seem like it's deep, but it's not. I'll I'll I'll, I'll depth check my paddle, and if my tape is still above the water, your pad, your blade, your your mass is about two feet. Plus your weight, which is added to about another four inches with three feet, that gives you an idea that if you're touching the ground, that means your foil is like right there close to the leaf. Yeah, and that's another issue too. You know, we, we all need to be, you know, responsible for our environment. And a lot of times, you know, you just don't want to get off or maybe there's Vana and you start grinding your your wing into the reef. Man, that's, that's not cool. You know, you got to keep your gear off the reef. You know, be, be responsible and uh, don't gouge the reef. Get off your board, flip your board <laughs> over, start swimming. Uh, yeah, I mean, and also if it's not safe to be laying on your board and paddling, if there's waves yeah. coming, just get off the board. Get off the I swim, mean, don't, man. don't put yourself in that yeah. position. Think about the old brothers, the kupuna before us that, that surfed big with no leash. They yeah. did a lot of swimming. Try to keep the board away. You have the wave. You have you, and then you have the board. Never put yourself in you between the wave right. and the board because the board can obviously roll right on top of you. So again, the risk management thought, and you know, there's a variety of ways you can paddle out, but just using your risk process, management process in the safest way possible. <laughs> so when it comes to safety and being in, in full control of the foil, I think all my brothers here can tell you that even after a diligent amount of hours on the foil, 
right? You're still really not that good. You know, you might have in your head and you're all puffed up and guys are blown away because you're like looking so cool up there on that foil. And, you know, you, you tend to let it get to your head and you think you're better than you are. But in reality, if you, you know, I'm sure we all look back and just go, wow, man. Because sometimes, you know, with the movement of the water and the wings are changing your wings. You are 100% you know, right. Dude, you, you're not that good. The you ocean know? will I always you, give you the humble part. <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 humble so part. this just reinforces how important it is to stay away from other people. So it brings us into the topic of, okay, well, where do we surf? You know, where, where's, where's cool to surf? Do we start naming some surf spots or is, is that not cool? You know, so just, everybody's got to use their own judgment. Just because you see other foilers out there does may not make it okay for you to be out there, you know. But then again, there's there's other spots that um, there's an inside break, you know. And if there's other people not surfing, like we, we, we go to spots on the North Shore where, you know, I'm sure there would be guys that would want to tell us, hey, we don't want foils out here. But, well, you know, I, I, we, my first time at inside. I, at, at the bay that I went out at, if we don't want to name any places, but um, I was amazed how many foils were out there. Yeah. And um, there's a lot of uncles and aunties and kids and everything out there, and I just see that place of something's, there's just too many guys ripping around there. I don't know, I, that's a close one. You've been out there, right? Kahana Bay. I, I enjoyed it. I couldn't believe the mix out there. There was like I know, but it's just 70, a... 75 of us all together from the school, yeah. BYU, and they're stoked as you go by. Everybody was good. Yeah, there was just, space. Yeah. Everybody I, I, I hope space. so. I hope it continues to stay that way. And as Leo said, everyone is vigilant and respectful. Yeah, that's the etiquette. That's yeah. the etiquette I mean, that you, you guys get. Kids, the surfers getting into it on their surfboards on their prone boards. There's a lot of them now. Yeah, they're and it's just gonna have, it's yeah. gonna multiply. And, and what's what the bummer to me is that some of them, they're not riding a leash. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. and the you know what? It's us guys, guys man. Yeah. We're we're like the kupuna to them. Yeah. Or we gotta tell them, hey, bro, put, you gotta put a leash. a leash on that, man. You gotta put a leash on it. Put a leash on it. Put a leash on it. You paddle out to our break without a leash. We're gonna send you in. Yeah, we've had a couple of those get, already. Go get a leash. Yep, we get it back I to the shelf. I forgot mine. No problem. Go to the back of my truck. Borrow mine out of the back of my truck. You have Pacho and all those guys getting into it, right? Pacho, yeah. and Moss, Pacho. You got the younger kids, so they can tell those kids. You know what? Just for safety, yeah. so we can keep going out here. Yeah. We gotta, we gotta watch for everybody. Yeah. Else. We, everybody we talked falls. about the self-regulation, and that's why we're here. So this is us sending the message out to even the up and coming foilers. You know, we all want to do this and, you know, we should be respecting the, the proper guidelines because, like, again, we'll take one person, doesn't matter who you are, um, you can mess it up for everybody. And, and none of us can do it. Some guys, why don't they use leash? Their leashes get caught up in the foils and they got to untangle the thing. Well, guess what? Welcome to foiling. Yes. Yeah. 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 Welcome to foiling. It's not surfing. Yes. You want to surf? That's fine. Foiling. Everything you know, again, like I said earlier, everything you know about foiling, everything you know about surfing, out the window. Everything you're going to learn about foiling, you got to deal with it. That's the way it is um, because of the whole safety factor. And that's all. That's all. It's, yeah. That's so all if you're new to foiling, there's a bunch of different avenues that you can use to get advice. You go on social media, there's a bunch of different foiling groups. And more importantly, wherever you come from, you find out where the other guys are foiling. Go introduce yourself, make new friends, ask questions. That's the best way for you to evolve your ability in foiling is learning. Because when I, I know when I started, there was no one here doing it and I didn't have anyone to ask. I had to shoot video and send it to Titus and Alex to get pointers and they were actually coaching me through my videos. But today, you guys are lucky, man. There's all kinds of guys that foil and if anybody's into foiling, they're, they're usually pretty passionate about it and they're not greedy to share their knowledge. And, and you, you can get a lot of um, advancement through asking questions. You know, and to Edmund's point, too short a leash, it's going to come back in your face too fast. Rem the other one is, um, uh, 
the proper position when you get wiped out by a wave or you have to dive under a larger wave, let's say you're getting good enough and you have, or you get stuck in a place, um, believe it or not, the best position for you to be in as a wave is pulling you is to have the wave pull you out of the danger zone, let it push you in. And also, and that means instead of standing straight up and having your head, put your foot out, let the board pull you. Because if you pull your leg down and pull it straight down, you put tension on the, on the leash, even a long one. And as we all know, if there's pressure on the foil, it'll fly. So if you have pressure on the foil, because there's so much pressure on that leash, it's going to fly up backwards and it's going to come right at you. As opposed to if you lay out long, and I've tested this so many times, if you lay out long and give the foil not enough tension to fly back at you, it's, it's a little safer. And then if you have an 8 or 10 foot leash, it's even better. But I really Minimal. find that if you put tension on that sucker, she's going to come flying back at you like Jaws. Backwards, yeah. yeah. And uh, the leashes, leash management <clears throat> for the prone guys, when you're out in the water, you're sitting down, you're holding the leash next to you. You've doubled it up, you're holding it next to you because we, nothing, more than you, nothing you hate more than here comes a wave and you're spinning around and you feel your leash is tangled underneath your board. Okay, so you're just going to hold the leash there, hold your rail, spin around, let it go. Okay, so that's part of leash management right there. Yeah. Yeah, you, you might tuck it in your shorts. Yeah, or tuck it in the shorts and stand up, standing up to you. Tuck it in your shorts. Uh, if I can give you a little little idea that uh, uh, that bungee. was introduced to me, and um, I took it to another place, is they make the little foamy practice golf balls. You guys know those little foam plastic golf With balls? balls? No, no, like the foam, okay. all foam. They're made of like, like Nerf foam, okay? I drill the hole in it, okay? I cut a slot halfway through to the hole. I wrapped it around my leash and I put a little crazy glue and I glued it together. I have a little teeny foam ball that sits on the middle of my leash. Nice, you got a floater. And so it's perfect. a little floater. Floater. And, yeah. it never, and it never gets wrapped around. And yeah. trust me, a little golf ball size floating on the middle of your leash does not have any drag at all. No. And it works so well. So just a little golf ball, drill a hole, cut a slot, and then crazy glue together. Some people drill the hole and then take the whole leash apart and slide it on. But Yeah, but here we'll do a little B-roll later. I'll some yeah, footage. I'll send you a picture, Robert, of what it looks yeah. like. Yeah. Ten-foot yeah. coil leashes, I love them. Um, I, I, as a stand-up paddler, as a surfer, I hated coil leashes. They didn't like them. Only why they got tangled up all over the place. Yeah. However, for foiling, I was always, uh, I didn't like coils, and I never like above the calf. Uh, above the calf leash. Me now, I use an above the calf, uh, above the calf leash, coiled. To me, that's the best. I like them. I use them all the time, and that's all I rather use. Um, I, I. You too, Kalani. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't I tried that. I'll have to try that. I, I, but it has to be above the calf. Now, yeah. if you can find a leash, uh, if you notice, um, there's a small little tail. You know, there, you, you got your calf, and you got small little um, space in between here. Then you got your coils, and you got small little leash, and then it goes down. It goes down to your, um, your attachment yeah. to your board. But if you can find one where the coil is more um, up towards your calf, makes it a lot more easier yeah, for you. Because I to find get what under. happens is when you have a coil leash, it's nice to be able to have it on your calf. Because for me, I find with the coil leash, when I'm pumping back out, the, the whole coil rod is like banging on my board. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I was lucky that the kind for a while was made this leash, a floating leash. Super light floating leash. Yeah, that was they're, made like 30 years ago, now. those guys yeah. made it. Yeah, they're hard to find. They're hard to find now, but those are ideal. Yeah, I think, no, they're bringing those back. Actually, I, I talked to um, the rep, so yeah. yeah. Good. Leash. And what I like to use is the retractable leash. I have like a waist leash that just retracts, and it's never in my way. <laughs> but it's a little bit heavier. So yeah, the only yeah. thing about the coil leash is if you wiped out, the coil will bundle. Bundle up and it'll create a knot. 
and it can wrap around your and the, the further and the more you stretch it out the longer the coil mm -hmm. will get so what i do at the end of my session i'll i'll recoil the leash together and keep it nice and tight because mm -hmm. if, if you don't keep it nice and tight every session it'll the yeah. coil will be yeah. super long and then it'll start wrapping up a bunch of more yeah, especially when it gets in heat. If you're stretched out around your board, yeah. it gets hot and it holds so the memory of being long. Exactly. Well, since you're Usually. foiling, <laughs> since you end up foiling and catching a wave all over the place and go half a mile down the road, once you're done, hey, fix your leaves, yeah. fix all your equipment, yeah. get everything together, and then head right back exactly. off. I've seen quite a few accidents. People are getting excited about foiling. Once you get the virus, it's pretty hard to not <laughs> get your fix. And so, um, uh, Paddling into a strong offshore wind is uh, is really difficult because if you're on a stand-up board, especially if you're a beginner and you're on a stand-up board, um, there's a lot of windage underneath and the board has a tendency to want to fly a lot quicker. And also with an offshore wind, the waves stand up more, right? So with the standing wave, there's more flow coming up and uh, the foil wants to take off even more. So I just, I'd like to raise that People be really careful with strong offshore winds. Believe it or not, some of the best conditions for foiling are onshore, side shore winds where most surfers don't want to be. And um, that's kind of where we gravitate to is, you know, little onshore, side shore, you know, when the surfers don't want to go out. You can go to really popular spots when the conditions are kind of junk and you can surf it because nobody wants to go out because it's not that good. So watch the... Um, the strong offshore winds, be, uh, be aware of that. And uh, juicy waves, juicy shore break, uh, not good to go in shore break that's, you know, top to bottom. Uh, that's not a real uh, particular foil wave that you'd want to go after. More slopey, uh, rolling surf. I like to call them bunny hills. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Small bunny little hills. bunny hills. Head for the shoulder, I play for the shoulder. Yeah. I, I like looking for those. Uh, you know, Tony Moniz told me that he said, uh, you know, it's the first time ever I backed out of a two foot wave <laughs> yeah. on a hydrofoil. <laughs> you know, two foot standing wave, I'm out. <laughs> you gotta it's, hit it at that, an angle. Yeah. yeah. A two foot off wave, it's not that steep. Yeah. Just really change the gradient. Be careful because when the transition is there, um, your your wing immediately comes out, but if you can hit it at an angle, maybe that's something we should jump onto soon as the different equipment. So basically you don't want to, um, some of the gear when it comes, it's really sharp. You don't need a sharp edge. You can just take a uh, little 400 and just take the, take the hard edges off it so it's not really sharp. It'll still uh, be effective in the water. Um, but um, it, and it can still offer up a danger point that you have to manage the risk for. It. But I believe that just taking the edge off will really help. And um, uh, again, always wear your protective gear, especially if you're learning. An impact vest is huge because as surfers, we normally our first instinct is to cover our heads and um, and protect our heads. But we're wide open for for rib shots. So that's why I always just wear a thin vest to keep you warm and uh, and just offers up a little protection. And a helmet too. <laughs> Carry on. Lock in. I, I, I never really wore a helmet much. And there's this one particular incident that can happen. And, and Josh Seymour has it on video, man. And what happens is you, especially when you start getting into real high speed stuff. So, you know, we start riding these little wings, getting towed in behind a jet ski on some good energy waves and you're flying down the line. What happens a lot of times is the water level changes and you're just not ready for it. You're covering so much ground in, in such a short amount of time. The wing pops up and you just go down. And what happens, and, and it's kind of a cool thing because like wings like GoFoil, it just really slows down pretty quickly, you know, but it doesn't slow all the way down. And what happens is you, your, your wing will pop out, go back down, and it shoves your board flat back down on the ocean again, and you go flying off the front, and then 
the board continues to come at you. And I, I've, I've taken a wing to the head. Luckily, GoFoil's nice and blunt. It just gave me a big old knot on my head. But a helmet is a, is a great idea. You know, if, if you can be humble enough and, and wear a helmet in your beginning stages with an impact vest, there's a bunch of different types of impact vests. They've got those cell block ones that like um, Jet Pilot makes. Those are great. I mean, it'll really reduce the impact when you're doing high speed and your wing pops out and shuts down and you go flying you will go flying over the handlebars it's just um, yeah i hit the i usually hit the nose on those wipeouts and i as i roll out of it to get out of it i catch the nose on my side and that's why i wear the impact vest. yeah i have uh, two comments about helmets and um impact vests one is obviously for safety purposes Two is it also shows that the rest of the community and the public that you're using safe, safe measures, yeah. um, and shows that hey, I'm trying to do something in a safe fashion, and people you might have get more respect to what we're trying to do. Um, again, the ocean will always humble you, no matter how good you are. Uh, high speeds, like Lele talked about, happen so fast, even to the most experienced. You might not get hit by the foil by the helmet, but the helmet could save you by, when she hit the impact on the water with your head, you know, you could rip your eardrum, you could get a concussion because you hit in the water so hard. So the, uh, a helmet would come into play in a variety of foiling. We had one of the brothers who was actually foiling, and um, <clears throat> the guys that foil with us, we, we had a small little hui, and one of our guys in our hui actually was foiling high again staying high and uh, stay high and fly but once he breached or he over foiled he came down with full force the next day he had a slight concussion called him up hey come in here he come in not always good no i got a concussion i well, tore my retina and I so tore the retina on my eye on a crash um on bigger waves the the bigger the wave the more fast you're going the more speed you're going um i i'm starting to i the last big wave session that I did, I, I wore a helmet and I felt kind of weird, yeah. but I was glad I wore it because I was going so fast. Yeah. And then I ended up, you know, your board, your foil is two feet, plus you're another six feet. That's eight feet from where your head is down and hits the thing and, and slams it really hard. So I'm glad, I glad I had that helmet. Yeah. And when I hit the, when I hit the water, the first thing, the first thing came to my mind is not with a foil, not with a wave stick. I glad I was wearing a helmet only because I hit that thing so hard that um, I felt it, and my helmet was actually turned towards my face like this. <laughs> okay, now here comes the wave. Needless, Ooh. I had the helmet on. That was good. Good thing I had. So, helmet is a good thing. Life jacket, impact vest. I always wear them all the time. So we're gonna be going doing a lot of downwinds, yeah, eventually. And so we're gonna be. Do you think we'll be using longer cords then if we're going over the handlebars? Stuff and I, the, think this, and the I don't think the speeds are as great. It's not as, as high yeah. on down with the speeds. Are as the fact, the fact that your cord is in the back of the board and you're in the front of the board and it just pushes the yeah. board right into you, so you need to increase the amount of cordage. Probably you need. Maybe that's something that's going to be standard. We're going to tell people, hey, you, get, you need a longer cord. You know, here, use mine. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, going over the handlebars, the board coming right at you. Something um, to consider. Yeah. yeah. It seems like a lot of people have the perception that downwind foiling is real easy. Oh, no. And that, that they can start okay. doing it that way. But <laughs> okay. Okay. A lot of people we, do. <laughs> yeah. So we, we all think, know okay, it's I mean, not that easy. We need we need and learn how to foil, right? It's hard. It's hard. Yeah. Kyle, you can do it anybody can. Oh, jeez. Oh, 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 yeah. oh, my goodness. <laughs> he's a, he's a, he's a and don't perfect. copy everything Kai does. You, I've seen him without a leaf way too many times. Yeah. Okay. What about those um, falling on your foot, like when you're starting out and you're not offset okay. with the weight? Yeah, you want to do that? I can yeah. jump in on that yeah. one. Yeah. All right, so, you know, a lot of guys, when they see us guys foiling, um, it looks like we're on a regular surfing sample. What, that, what actually happens is we're actually squared off. So, there's three things that happens. The board can reach up and down, turn left and right, or actually roll. The most dangerous part is the actual rolling part. And what happens is, um, a lot of us guys end up going in our surfing stance, like who we put it. So if you notice, straight down the line, if you was to divide my body in half, I got more weight this side than I actually do this side. 
So what's, what's going to happen is once this thing starts to lift up, I'm already giving it a command to turn right. But it happens so fast that the board's going to turn this way. You're going to fall this way. The board is coming up here. So to prevent that, what I do is when I teach all my other friends and show them how show them when they're pointing, make sure that your body is squared off. So once your body is here, you're actually divided in the board, and you're actually squared off and everything's all balanced. Because if you're in a regular surfing stance, yeah, you're already giving it a command without even you even knowing that it's going to happen. So if you square your body off, everything is squared, everything's on a point. Once the point wants to lift up. And keep in mind, this point is always going to want to jump up no matter what. It's going to come up, and as long as you can control it, yeah, while it's coming up, you're fine. Stay low and in control instead of trying to go high and fly. Again, if somebody rolls, the first thing you ask them, are you goofy footed? I guarantee you, you fall to the left side of the board. Or if you're regular stats, same concept. If you're regular stats and the board roll on you, what are you regular stats? I guarantee you, you fall off to the right side of the board. Same concept because you're in your surfing stats. What you gotta do is try and square it off. And that's not actually um, the best way to understand the roll. The roll concept is try to um, control the board by squaring your body off. And putting your feet in the right place too. Yeah. So what I like to do when I'm teaching someone how to foil is the most important thing is to make sure that your speed's not too high. You're taking off on a wave, you're going at a slow speed, you want to make sure your footing is correct. And that's why I like having a front foot strap. I can get my front foot in the correct place. I put a stomp pad right in the back of my rear screw so I, can, I don't have to look to where my foot needs to be. I just slide my foot back and I know it's in the correct spot. The third thing, third thing to remember is like Sam was saying, you square up your body. And what this does for me is it allows me to transfer weight to my back foot and my front foot evenly parallel with the rails. So that's, every, that's, every, that's how you control um, your altitude is when you change the level of your board, it changes the level of the weight go up or down and by having your shoulders squared off instead of doing this you have it squared off and you can you can position your weight over your front knee and back on your back foot as you need it so nice and easy nice and slow slow speed your feet are in the correct position because once you start getting off on one rail then that's when that accident happens where if you get too much speed the foil lifts you up rapidly. This is when you really need to be aware that if you come up too quick, just kick it up from under you. Because when you try to correct it and it's already up on the top of the surface, that's when that roll happens. And when it comes over on one side, you can't help but fall this way. And guess what? There's a foil there just kind of waiting for you. So. Bail it out from under you. You really want to start nice and slow and just start flying at two inches at a time. Start get it, get it up at two inches, shove it back down. That's where the major learning curve to this sport is. Learning how to go from surfing on the ocean flat to activating it and correcting it. So you get going at two inches, start flying at four inches, start flying at six inches, just keep it nice and low. And that's what you want to be able to do, is to be able to turn around, take off on anything, and just activate it and correct it, and then now you're flying on the wing. Okay, very good. When, when I started, I wasn't used to using the straps. And a lot of people, when they start off, they kind of get intimidated by using straps. So what I did, you, you definitely want to get your, your weight distribution on the center of the board. So what I did is I put a center mark and a horizontal mark. So I had a, a mark right here. Then I know where to put my front foot because I didn't have a strap. Obviously the kick pad really works well because you don't have to look, you can just go by feel. And like Leleo and Sam said, if you like this, this is what's gonna happen. You're gonna do this. Yep, it's a bend over. And this is when the bar will roll up like this. And then this is where the foil is. Okay, we talked about the rolling. So if you're not squared off this way, and you're this way, and that's guarantee is gonna happen. You're gonna roll this way, or you're gonna roll that way. And the foil's gonna come hit your back, or hit your front. I have a score right here to prove it, and I, I blocked it. 
Good thing I blocked it because where would have hit afterwards? My face. Okay? Also, when you kind of get the board up and flying, doesn't matter, two, four, six inches, I, I use my hips. Okay? A lot of my weight is on my front foot now. And I'm, I'm just kind of correcting myself by just doing this. Just moving my hips back and forth. That's it. This is the pretty much, if, if, if I'm doing this, obviously, I'm gonna be, I won't come out of the water, right? I'll be stay on the, uh, on the surface of the, the, the water. But it's all, it's all about this, keeping your upper body straight. Not this. This is a no, no. This is no for sure. This, is, this will get you into it. It's all this and this. Okay, you, you're going down the face of a wave. A lot of guys, normal surfers, do this, right? Yeah. And what will happen if you do this on a foil? The thing will shoot up. So you gotta really commit yourself when you're going down a soft face, is this. The steeper it is, the more you gotta lean in the front to keep that front down. If not, you're gonna be shooting out of the water. Once you get it up and going, it's all about this. And then what I do when I do graduate turns, I open my knee when I do my turn. I point my front knee to where I'm turning. This, this could be a big, big tip because I help a lot of guys. Oh, how come I'm turning and I'm falling down? I'm getting back down. I said, open up your, 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 your knees when you turn. Different mass size. Um, the different companies have different mass size. And it pretty much comes down to where you're surfing, what, what, what you're surfing, whether it's a prone board, a stand-up board, where you're towing in. Um, we notice that as we get going faster with bigger energy and we're towing in, we like our mass to be longer. Um, so we actually, Alex created this extension that goes on to the standard GoFoil mass, which is 24 and a half inches. Extension gives you a little bit more. You can actually extend it more with the plate to tunnel box adapter. It give you another two and a quarter inches. Um, it's pretty much a preference. Just keep in mind that the more, the deeper your mass, the less you're be able you're able to paddle out. Like I like surfing in Waikiki, and the 24 inch mass works pretty good in Waikiki. Once I added the extension on it it kind of limited me as to far how far back i could fade into the wave where it gets a little more shallow so it's kind of your own personal preference um, it's nice to be able to have an extra uh, couple inches on your mask because now you've got a little bit more safety there before you start popping out and also um, this mask was designed by Alex, and this is particularly for lessons, and it's a, it's a short mask. And it's just created for safety, you know? It's a, it's a great way to start learning. If you're on Oahu, you can call Robert at, at Blue Planet or me directly, and we provide you some good, safe lessons and, and etiquette along with that. Different wing size. And we got all kinds of different wings. Yeah, so this is the smallest wing. You know, when you got lots of energy, uh, you don't need as much wing. And so this is the Nala wing. Both of these are Kai wings, and they are pretty much the go-to once the energy starts getting sufficient. For me, you know, like shoulder head, head high. And you gotta keep in mind how much you weigh, what kind of board you're on, really determines how much wing you want. And next one above that is uh, the Eva wing, which for me is pretty much as far as I would go as meeting lift. Unless it gets really tiny, then I'll go on to a Maliko 200. But, uh, so it goes Nalu, Kai, Eva. Back here on, on Sam's board is a Maliko 200. And the Maliko 200 and the Eva both come with a, a larger back wing. And you'd be amazed how much difference the back wing, how much more lift it gives you. Because you can actually run a smaller wing back here. But uh, when, when you put a larger back wing on there, it's just a, a huge difference. So a lot of people ask us about the Blue Planet foil size, the wing size. This is the one I've been using, the 1440. is like we measure the wing uh, surface area. I just wanted to show um, as a comparison, uh, our, our wing is, this is the Kai, Kai foil size. So it's bigger than the Kai foil. 
actually quite a bit bigger than the Kaipo, but it is smaller than the Eva, Eva wing. This is the Evo size. A little bit smaller, but kind of much closer to the Eva size than to the Kai, Kai wing size. Okay. And we are going to have a smaller and a bigger size as well. If somebody's around me and instead of letting the board go, I got a 10 foot leash and plus another plus a seven foot board just about 18 feet of uh, hazard that's going around there i can actually hold on to the hold on to the handle and hold on to the board so it actually makes it safe for everybody around me so i make sure that um, it doesn't become a hazard in front of everybody i love handles tail handles um if it's upside down yeah. And I'm under the water. Yeah. I'm under the water. I'm actually holding it like this. The foil is above the water. Everybody can see the foil. Everybody can see the board. But I'm still in control of this board. I'm holding it on here. Yeah. Um, what I usually do is I don't, I don't grab it this way. Yeah. I always put underneath my fingers because so if yeah if, if I if I need to come out my hand my hand comes out here what happens is if a wave comes here and it breaks on here what happens is this thing goes down here and then my now my fingers caught underneath here so what I usually do is I'll always hold my paddle underneath here okay so oh you want to talk about that yeah, thing a little bit? Yeah. Um, uh, this is the paddle clip. I always use them. I've always been a big advocate of, of, again, when it comes down to safety. If I lose my board, yeah, I break my leash, I lose my board, and now now I gotta swim. I got a paddle in my hand, and I gotta swim, and you know, I gotta swim to my board, and I don't know what to do, and then the waves are coming. So, what I usually do is I have this already clipped to my shorts. Yeah, then what I'll do is I'll take this, put it here. Yeah, cinch it down. Now I can swim hands free. I can look wherever I need to go. So, so no matter where I go, that paddle won't follow me. If a wave comes in, I'm gonna dive underneath. The paddle won't follow me no matter where I go. So at least I can swim hands free. If it's uh, really hard to do with to swim um, with one paddle in the hand and a wave coming and what you gonna do? So um, I, I'm a good. I, I like I like using a paddle clip. Um, when it comes time to go to the shore break. You go to the shore break, the wave is coming to you, you got to put your paddle down, put the board on top, stick the paddle here and paddle. By that time, three seconds later, here comes another shore break. So what I'll do is I'll get this thing ready, I'll run with my board and get ready, and I'll run into the shore, throw the board underneath, underneath me and paddle out, and then I get over the wave. Coming back, same thing too, if there's a shore break coming in, I'll put this here, and then I'll paddle with my board, and once I get onto the sand, I grab on my board and I run, I don't have to worry about Picking up my board, looking for my paddle, and running to the shore break. By the time I get everything acclimated, too late to already getting nailed by the shore break. Somebody else loses a paddle. You, you know, your friends lose a paddle. You're paddling around. You get your paddle with you. You see your friend's paddle. You can take that paddle, put them with you, take them out with you, and you go back back to you. So I see a lot of paddle clips, with paddle clips, and I use them and I love them and I still use them to this day. So, um, you can get these paddle clips at uh, Blue Planet. Uh, yeah, they're they're um, at Blue Planet right now. You can get you can get What's them. The just go see Robert and uh, the gang. They're fifteen dollars right. for for a paddle clip. Yeah. Cool. Before they're not too sure how they end up. You know how do you get to the shoreline? Some will carry them like this. Some will put them on their shoulders. You know, and they're real awkward. They try to carry the thing. And they put it on it. Then they got their paddle up here, and then they're trying to carry like this and going down the short, going down the, to the short break. So what I usually do. Because I am left-handed, yeah, I'll put the foil up, yeah, and I'll have this foil and this board on my right hip. So when I pull the board this way, it also falls into my left hand. So I'll take my paddle, grab the fuselage, yeah, and the paddle, and grab it all at once, yeah, and grab my foot strap, then I can turn it on, yeah, and do whatever I want. Go down to the short break, or go down to the beach, put it down, make sure I'm in deep, deep, deep water, or deep enough water, yeah? and then I'll roll it to this side. So my, so this foil will end up going on this. As long as I know it's deep enough, I'll roll it down, then I'll get onto the right side of the board, take a paddle, put it underneath me, and just go out so I know it's clear enough. So that's one way. So this, this is how I do it. Everybody have their own. Uh, personal way I, I put my 
and I'm I'm a regular foot, so I put my handle on uh, my, and I stay in front of the foil. I'll put my hand and the handle with my my uh, paddle, and then I'll grab the foil from the back end. So when I get into the water, I'm ahead I'm ahead of the foil. It's just that's my my safety management process that I try to set, especially if I gotta get on pretty quick. I try to put me ahead of the foil. Uh, th as to this way, if I get into the surf zone this way and I got to manage myself, but I have a wrist right here in front of me, wave, hazard, myself. So I'm trying to put myself ahead of the hazard. So things to think about it, wrist management. Like if you're on in shallow water, what you can do too is lay it down and then just grab the foil and pull it behind you until you get in deep enough water. But that way the foil is behind you. Like if you're going out, like say through a, you know, like a sandy um, beach or something like that, yeah. like a sandy entry with shore break, don't, yeah, don't be behind the foil, be in front of the foil, but control it and, and just, you know, that, this way you can kind of just get it out to deep enough water, like waist deep, and then you can flip it over. I'll show you what I like to do. Yeah. Okay. So just so that the water's got a lot of movement in it, and you know, you've got all these different components now. I like to keep my stuff together. So I actually slip my paddle through my handle, and then I line it up with my leash, and then I just kind of fasten my leash. To the paddle like this just so that once I get in the water it's kind of going to hold my paddle where it needs to be and then I can kind of because I don't have a handle on my board so this paddle is now turned into my handle and this is kind of how I um, transport my gear to the water and that way when I'm when I put my gear into the water and everything's sloshing around at least I know my paddle is kind of safe. It's not going to get blown away and washed away, and I got to go swim for it. You know, I can put my leash on, remove my paddle, and get ready to paddle out. I, myself, I'm a little bigger person. I, I prefer a little bigger wing. I, I tend to use more of the Eva. That, that style there, it's a little bigger wing. Um, but when the surf does get a little juicier, I might go down to the Kai. Um, because obviously the bigger wing is made for more of the softer wave or uh, and the, the smaller the wing you can go much faster uh, much more maneuverable but not as much lift um, so the, the, the lighter guys might tend to go to the smaller wing this would be kind, kind of considered maybe the all-around size that you can kind of go up or down but I prefer the little bigger wing to my size but a lot of times with the bigger wing, and if you're going really fast, you really got to hold that wing down. So I really, sometimes you might have to adjust your front foot strap, maybe an inch or two more forward to help you keep that front down, or reposition your feet if you don't have a strap, or really exaggerate and put a lot of your weight on your front foot. Uh, the bigger wing, the 200 or the 280, which is about 42 inches from tip to tip, that's a 200, uh, made for more downwind, more soft wave, for more bigger guys. Um, I put a, I put a foil in my tandem board, and I, I started to use the 200 and the 280. And between me and my partner, we're about 300 pounds, and the 280 is making us uh, getting us good lift. So our overall goal is to start doing tandem surfing with. With the bigger wing. Oh, I'd so. love to see a video of that. Do you have some video of that? Some. Awesome. <laughs> but uh, as you know, the, the the foiling is just taking off now, and who knows where the foiling is go from here? Uh, obviously, with people like us, everybody's creative mind is trying to take it to the next level. And who knows? Uh, you might see it on one man canoes pretty soon here. So who knows? But it's definitely a fun and exciting sport. Definitely you need to take the precautionary measures by going through the learning curve and doing the right um, things before you start venturing into, you know, more dangerous surf or whatever, so. All right, so be safe out there. Thanks for watching this video. Thanks guys for coming out and, and sharing your knowledge. Aloha.
Allah. Thank you so much.